My name is Jan-Robert Leegte. I'm, uh, I have a background in architecture, after which I attended art school to shift to sculpture. Um, in the mid-90s, I came across uh, the internet. I work in various media, but they all are related to the, the question of what is the digital and how do we relate to the digital. One of the topics in my work is uh, our relationship with nature and more specifically our relationship with the remediation of nature from being, being participants in the wild through, to, through gardeners, through romanticists and now um, in the Anthropocene, um, the relation with nature is troubled. So with the increased complexity of digital simulations and representation and uh, the, the storm of imagery online, um, that in itself becomes a new ecology or a new relationship with nature. So my work uh, attempts to address these old themes of the sublime and the wild and also the cultivation of nature, but then through its remediations. One of the works here is a uh, both an internet work and a series of prints called Mountains and Drop Shadows. Um, originally an internet work uh, and one of the works uh, which, uh, which is a live internet work dealing with online imagery and fetching them real time. Mounts and Drop Shadows Explained is an algorithm which continuously in a, in a cycle of 10 seconds uh, fetches an internet, an image from the internet. So the work every 10 seconds fetches an in, image from the internet uh, within a specific query which is mountains. Um, once the image is fetched from the internet, uh, another process on, on the computer adds a archetypical interface element, the drop shadow, as a uh, rectangular form on top. Um, and it is this superimposition between an image and an, uh, a shadow, basically, which forms the work. Um, and the reason why I did this is because I wanted to have, create a sort of standoff between uh, from what is in, considered in my um, and a lot of people's uh, awareness of mountains um, as being a very grand monumental sculptural gesture of nature. Uh, we all have, not everybody, but a lot of people feel, feel uh, the immense power that goes out from, from mountains and traditionally that has been one of the key topics in Romanticism. Um, uh, and I wanted to, com uh, to oppose this natural force with a extremely uh, artificial element, which is the drop shadow, which is the suggestion of materiality of your computer interface. And um, to do that, I even created a drop shadow without content. So it's just the shadow. It's a shadow of nothing. So it's, it's less than nothing in a way. And uh, I created this standoff between less than nothing and the mountain to see who, who wins, who is, the, who is the most sculptural. And in my opinion, it is, I, th I think there's a delicate balance nudging towards the drop shadow. It's, it's a very monumental element and it, and why is that? Because I think I send out these queries for mountains online and of course they return this endless flow of imagery, but they are delocalized. Nobody knows where the mountain is. Nobody knows who took the photo um, and they lose their, uh, their value. Google Maps of Sculpture really started off as, as an internet work, again looking into sort of the sculptural possibilities within the frame of the browser. So I simply uh, created a cube, um, a rotating cube, and I textured it with um, satellite parts of Google Maps in satellite view. Um, and I wanted to create this sort of object which looked like a stone or, or a chunk of marble. 
Uh, I, as a child, I remember going to Carrara in Italy and seeing the big saws cut out these blocks of marble out of the mountains. And I, it, it seems, again, like such an archetypical um, sculptural um, uh, sort of story and form. So this cube of marble. Um, and to get this, I randomly select a part of the world. Um, and then I take a, for the rest of the faces of the cube, I take an offset around that point. So they have the same character, the same part of the world. So it could be a bit of Saharan desert or some, some rainforest or ocean or, or mountainous area. Uh, and that creates a, a material value. So they, the work again is live. It, uh, it refreshes every so often and then it will collect uh, we'll choose a random point and collect a new series of faces and endlessly sort of creating a new sculpture. The last work I wanted to talk about is Performing a Landscape, which is a nine channel video installation installed at the first floor. For this work I have used a game engine, a standard game engine off the shelf, uh, which is used by uh, about 90% of all game makers. It's, a, it's an extremely uh, popular and standardized game engine. And uh, what is a game engine? A game engine is basically uh, the tool in which to make games. So it's a tool in which you create this live three-dimensional condition uh, with which the user can interact, uh, thus gameplay. It's, uh, so it's, that's the reason they often call it an engine. It's because it's, it's live, it's performative, it's uh, um, it's react, it reacts. And um, for these game engines, endless amounts of add-ons have been created. Of course, character skins and uh, uh, all kinds of objects. And, but one a very big field of it is also natural settings. So a lot of games, of course, are um, competing to look uh, the most beautiful and the most realistic in nature. So there's like endless amounts of water simulators, uh, trees, forests, uh, texture, skies, you name it. Um, so what I used is, um, after, after researching this, I chose an, an amount of uh, uh, nature simulators, so water and weather and uh, trees and textures. And I set off to create a, uh, an artificial space or, a, or a, an island in this case. And after that, I, I simulated like a millennia of erosion to the island and had them uh, sort of had them weathered down as an ancient ruin. And then I added uh, sort of battering storm simulators um, and had trees grow over it and uh, mosses and grass. And after I created this condition, I spent like a week or two just wandering around the island. Um, sort of re, uh, redoing the tradition of land artists, just going out there in the field and just, um, it felt on one side like, like uh, sort of uh, en plein air painters, just going out there, finding a beautiful spot and registering it, or it felt like a land artist, sort of going out in this sort of artificial island and registering what you made, because that's of course also what is part of the work. Uh, and finding these spots, I sort of, tweak the conditions, which is what you can do. So I would put the sun lower or turn up the wind uh, till I found the image I want. And then I recorded videos there. And the reason why I call it performing a landscape is because it is, of course, completely artificial. And yet um, in the performance, there is this reality element. I, performance is a very pure art form because it's in the now and it's, it's, it's here and now. It's not about a moment earlier. And that's what the game engine does as well. It's, it's live, it's performative. Uh, and that brings it very close to nature as well. So it's not a representation, it's a simulation. It's, it's, it is a real thing, yet it is completely artificial. And I find that very exciting. I think that is something which, uh, which is a future we'll, we'll be seeing a lot more about.